Hello coders, in this video we're going to look at an option that somebody requested. This was wall sticking. So when I move my little guy here and I jump, he sticks to the wall. If he tries to climb up, he can climb up slowly. And if he tries to go down, he can slide down a little faster until he hits the end. Of course, at any time, you can just let go of the wall, do that. This uh, can be sort of useful, uh, depending on your game. I think the game they wanted was Ninja Gaiden. But anyways, there you go. Uh, here's how you do it. And keep in mind here, if I actually change the sprite, which would take me too much time, but if I actually change the sprite here to make a climbing sprite left and right, etc., this will actually look pretty good. But the functionality works really well. So here's how we did it based on the previous platformer code that you've seen in the other videos. So if you haven't followed the other videos, you should go look at those, or this code may not make sense. Anyways, in the player create, what I did was I gave them one extra variable here called wall sticking and I set it to false. Wall sticking is going to be when I know the person is stuck to the wall. Um, of course, I think we mentioned to some other people before that this actual method I'm using here um, was added after. Uh, if I had to add it from the beginning, I might have done it a little differently. But here we go. So I have my ladder code, my climbing up down the ladders, and here's my wall sticking code. Um, here it is. There's a lot of curly braces in there, but it's basically 20 lines of code with the braces, and that's the wall sticking. So here's what I did. I basically, at the beginning of every step, set my wall sticking to false. Okay, I'm always turning it false really quickly, and then I'm checking to see if there's a wall underneath me. The one requirement I'm having for this one is, is to stick to a wall, you have to jump onto it. You can't just walk up to a wall and then start climbing up. Now, if you don't care about that, you can literally take that line out, and then you'll be able to stick to the wall whenever you want. Okay, but that's up to you. So here we go. If there's no wall underneath me, basically I'm in the air, and I ask a second if here. If one pixel to the left of me, so the X minus 1 on place mean there's a wall, or one pixel to the right of me, there's a wall, then I know I'm basically up against the wall, and I can turn wall sticking to true. Now, I'm not requiring any key to be pressed for this to happen right now. I'm just saying, yeah, it's true. If you want to make a key also to be pressed, then you could add a little keyboard check into the condition, right, to make sure they're pressing something. I set VY to zero, uh, so they're not vertically Y velocity falling down or going up anymore. They're now stuck to the wall. And I also set double jump. If you included this one in your program, I also put the double jump to zero. I don't want them to be able to double jump off of the wall. Okay, off a wall, you can only just let go. So here we go. While they are wall sticking, basically the player can do two things. They can try to climb up until they hit a wall above their head, or they can go down until they hit the floor. So here we go. If the keyboard up key is pressed, I'm going to say, well, if there's no wall two pixels above me, then it's okay to move two pixels above me, right? That's the place meeting. Checks to see if you'd be colliding with the object or objects you mentioned. Now, this otherwise. So let's say it was free. Not meeting a wall, I actually move up. Otherwise, I know I'm hitting a wall. You've seen this in the previous videos. This is your move to contact code. So while not meeting a wall, one pixel above, move one pixel. This while loop will cycle until the player is basically going to hit their head on a wall above them. And that's when it stops. So even though they're pressing up, they are not going to be able to move up uh, if there's a wall one pixel above them. Right? The second check I do here is with going down. Now down, I think the person requested you go down a little faster. So I'm checking four pixels beneath me. If it's free, not meeting a wall, then actually go four pixels down with the Y. Otherwise, I must be hitting a wall if I'm four pixels beneath me, but maybe the wall is two pixels beneath me, three pixels beneath me, one pixel beneath me. So run that move to contact code again. While there's no wall, one pixel beneath me, move one pixel down. And that'll just keep cycling until the player basically gets their feet on the ground. And that's really it. The rest of the code is all the same. That's basically the wall stick code that I sort of stuck in there. Um, the rest of the code for gravity, jumping, double jumping, and the left right is all working. And this is why you can let go of a wall, right? Because the left and right code still hasn't been affected at all by the wall sticking. If you press left or right, 
you're going to move, you know, a certain distance left to right. And that's basically it. So that was the wall sticking. There it is. You can pause there. Uh, hopefully you can start to get an idea how to write these codes on your own. Uh, you can see platformers do start to get bulky, right, in the movement here, if you consider that bulky. But it starts to get a little bit more, right, as you start to add extra features. That's why it's really good to add these features um, after you've planned it out. Think of all your features and try to code it as best as you can one time, considering all those features, so you don't have to go and, like, insert code like this, right? Probably a little bit more of a cleaner, more efficient way to do this, but this works not too bad. Thanks for watching.